Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, yes, I am still camping. Yes, it's another gorgeous morning out. I don't wanna say gorgeous day because if you take a look behind me here, it looks like we are gonna be getting some rain at some point. But it is nice out right now. I'm wearing short sleeves, which is very odd for this time of year in Canada. And taking a look, I've got some seagulls on the beach here. I'm getting some real big Lynx Awakening vibes. Let me know in the comments below what beaches remind you of what video games. I'm actually kind of curious about that. Anyways, come along with me here on my morning walk. It's the break of dawn, it's sunrise, and we're going to talk about some news. So first up in the news here, we're talking about Retro Game Core, and this is not good news at all. So if you remember a while back, we talked about how Nintendo gave Retro Game Core a copyright strike over a three-second clip in a MIG Switch video. Well, it turns out that Nintendo has now given Retro Game Core a second copyright strike. If you're unfamiliar with copyright strikes on YouTube, if you get three of them, you're done. Your channel is over. Now, from my understanding, the first copyright strike that the Retro Game Core got was for a three-second clip in something like a 10 or 15-minute video. Nintendo did not give the Retro Game Core an option to remove that content and keep the video up. They struck down the entire video over three seconds, and I think it was a title screen for a game. And this second strike I think is kind of the same. Now I think Russ showed a lot more than three seconds worth of gameplay, but at the same time here there was no option to remove that section, keep the video up. Nintendo just issued a copyright strike for the entire thing. Now in my opinion this is not good news at all for the retro game core nor for the retro gaming community. I mean in my opinion I think Russ provides a lot of great information for the community, provides a lot of great work for it. And seeing this happening and seeing his channel at risk here is very disheartening. And I'm not joking with you when I say I think Nintendo is going to give it three strikes. Russ has a lot more than just one or two videos showcasing Nintendo footage. And Nintendo has seemed meticulous when going through videos to, I don't want to say target, but it looks like they're targeting the channel to possibly make an example of it. I mean, it's generating a lot of news here and a lot of people are really worried about that channel, Russ himself. And I'm wondering how long it's going to take Nintendo to come around for the third one. I could be wrong, I really hope I am. But it just seems that Retro Game Core is at super serious risk for getting a third strike. So here is Russ's official response, and I'm assuming we're going to hear more from him in the future in a YouTube video, or maybe not. Russ says, Hi friends, well it does appear that my worst fears are true and that I am being specifically targeted by Nintendo. My Wii U video was taken down and I received another copyright strike, even though the showcase video is no different than all of the tech demos and reviews I've made on this channel previously. I am still considering a counterclaim under fair use, as the video was for educational use transformative in nature and had no effect on the market. It was a demonstration of a console no longer for sale. However, I am reluctant to open that can of worms with a multi-billion dollar corporation as their next step would be to file legal action. At the very least this means I'm going to change how I approach future videos. I will no longer show any Nintendo games on screen, which is a shame because I love using those games for my hardware demonstrations. Russ then says he's going through the videos that he is working on and blurring out any Nintendo game content as a precaution, even innocuous content like NES games. Unfortunately this is going to delay some video releases. His latest video should be up right now but instead he has to re-edit and re-upload the video first but let me know your thoughts about this whole thing in the comments below do you think nintendo is in the right do you think russ is in the right in a battle in the courts do you think nintendo would win personally i think russ would win but at the same time here i don't know if russ would have the financial backing that nintendo does to take on a lawsuit like this one i'm very curious to see where this goes moving forwards i do not really have good feelings about retro game core survivability rate and i also don't have a good feeling about what Nintendo is going to do with other content on YouTube they don't see fit. I mean, a lot of channels showcase Nintendo games, and I mean a whole lot of them. Is Nintendo going to go through every single one, and every time they see something they don't quite like, they're going to strike down that video? To me, that doesn't really seem like fair use at all, but I could be wrong. Now, fortunately for the Retro Game Core, if Nintendo doesn't issue another copyright strike in the next three months, those copyright strikes go away and the Retro Game Core will be absolutely fine, back to square one. I don't know what's going to happen here. I don't have high hopes for the Retro Game Core. And I'm wondering why Nintendo is doing this. I mean, I can understand trying to protect their IP, but there's also a PR aspect to it and an overall viewpoint aspect, and 
Well, customers vote with their wallets. I mean, with everything I see Nintendo continuing to do here, for example, Smash tournaments and game mods, and now game footage, it just, it's screaming anti-consumer to me, but I could be wrong. But moving on from all of that, and I probably talked way too much about it, next up here, we're talking about Deadlock. Now, Deadlock is Valve's yet unreleased game. It's currently in alpha. It has a major cheating problem, and Valve has just introduced something interesting into its new anti-cheat. So in Deadlock's latest update here, here, Valve has added an initial anti-cheat detection system. When a user is detected as cheating during the game session, the opponents will be given a choice between banning the user immediately and ending the match, or turning the cheater into a frog for the rest of the game and then banning them afterwards. So they are still working on this anti-cheat system, but this is the initial implementation of it. And I, for one, would love turning someone into a frog and just having them hang around. <laughs> On top of that, they also introduced a brand new hero, Mirage. Overall, this is a pretty big update to Deadlock. There were a whole bunch of changes, improvements, and fixes, and I'll drop a link to the change log in the description below. Like everything I talk about, links to everything are in the description below right at the bottom. My news is 100% open source in the public domain and, well, I don't hide any of my sources. Next up, we're talking about Tetris, and if you're a fan of Tetris, if you're trying to get better at Tetris, that's a really loud bird. Anyways, if you're a fan of Tetris, if you're trying to get better at Tetris here, well, the official Tetter, Tetter, the official Tetris Twitter account, or X account, says big news. Tetris is teaming up with Arika on a new addition to Tetris the Grandmaster series coming in 2025. This game is designed to help train you into the ultimate Tetris Pro. Are you ready to become a Grandmaster? I am very curious about this one. I'm awful at Tetris. I'll be transparent with you, and I've got no interest in becoming better with it because I just suck at the game. If you're interested in Tetris, if you play Tetris, let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Next up, we're talking about Minecraft, and if you're a Minecraft fan, you may be excited about something that is entirely brand new here. So Minecraft has unveiled their brand new biome, and this one is called the Pale Garden Biome. It's got new trees, new enemies, and even more stuff in it. So this new biome will be grayish in overall color tones and will be seemingly devoid of enemies until nightfall. When nightfall happens, there are these like tree-like monsters that you'll have to kill and their hearts are located in tree stumps. It's a very interesting concept here, and probably very creepy. And they only move when you don't look at them. As someone who enjoys just goofing around in Minecraft, I'm very excited about this one and looking forward to the update. If you still play Minecraft, if you still goof around in it, let me know your thoughts about it. And speaking about updates for a game that's been out for a while, next up we're talking about Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. And this game is getting a DLC update. I'm very surprised about that given the fact that Sparking Zero is coming along very soon and I expected all attention to be directed to that game. But no, Xenoverse 2 is getting an update. Taking a look at the comments of the trailer and a lot of people seem to be excited about a playable Belmond and a brand new Jiren. And I'm excited about this one. I'm very glad to see Xenoverse 2 still being supported. But moving on, and next up we're talking about Baldur's Gate 3. And Baldur's Gate 3 has a brand new fan mod that I'm pretty sure is going to be taken down pretty quickly. Because this one adds Pokemon-ish elements into the game. It basically allows you to capture any creature with Pokeballs. I'm not joking with you. So this new Pokeball mod adds 40 flasks to the tutorial chest in the game's Nautiloid opening. These flasks can then be picked up and used on any entity in the game, including your allies. And no surprise here, this one is super buggy. And the creator of this one says, don't use it on an existing game, only use it on a new game in case you wreck your game. I mean, here's the direct quote, use common sense on what to use it on, or you may break the playthrough. It's meant to be used as a fun gimmick rather than a serious modification of the game. Be prepared that your playthrough can become bricked if you use the flask on something important to the story. I can see a whole bunch of chaos because of this mod. Next up, we're talking about PlayStation 4 emulation with, yes, you guessed it, Shad PS4. And one of the main developers of Shad PS4 has just showcased a brand new video on YouTube with Bloodborne and some lighting fixes. In my opinion, Bloodborne is looking real, real good. I mean, there's a whole bunch of mods for it out already. There's a whole bunch of patches and a whole bunch of hacks and tweaks to get it to kind of work pretty good. And seeing this gameplay is just, well, it's very impressive to me. Next up, we're talking about a brand new SNES beat-em-up game that seems to be in development. So I don't know the title of this one, but the tweet here says, New Super Nintendo Beat Them All, Work in Progress. And there is a video showcasing some gameplay here. 
And well, it seems to be shaping up nicely. I don't have really a whole lot of information about this game, including release date or demos or story or really anything like that. But I'm glad to see new games on old systems. And last up here, if you're a fan of the Amstrad and a fan of Street Fighter and a fan of fan games, you may be a fan of this news. So we've talked about this one in the past and we didn't have a release date for it. But now we've got a release date for Mighty Street Fighter. And Mighty Street Fighter will be released on the Amstrad in December of this year. Now all of the information about this game, including the story, the controls, and pricing, and really everything is up on their itch.io page. And I'm going to be checking this one out. I'm very curious about it, and I think it looks great for being on the Amstrad. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and I guess some fluffs. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.